Hey guys, welcome back. 42 days and 42 years. My name's Tate Hill. I'm sharing my life with you. I hope that this can help some people in this world, maybe even help other people that have been so scared to bring out the truth of people that have been through this, what I'm about to especially say today. Um, I don't think I'm probably the only kid that this happened to. I think it's happened to several people. I think they were experimenting or doing something unless if it's really true that they actually cologned me that day um, or with whatever it is but um, I don't think I'm the only kid that this ever happened to and there's more out there and we need to find each other of each one that this did happen to and try to solve and figure out who these people were and what they were doing um, but uh, one of the times my foster parents went to take me to a, a hospital or a specialist or whatever it is, um, they took me to my foster mother alone, took me to this place. And she drove me up north somewhere or something. We drove for hours and then it came to a, where we had to get on a ferry. And we got on a ferry. I remember seeing fish and everything else. Um, I remember one of the times of these ferry trips, we went to an island and the island had one house on it. That's it, just one house. And I ended up, um, when we got there, they said I had a seizure. Um, but really I think they put me to sleep because a seizure puts you to sleep. Once you have a seizure, you wake up, you have to go to bed. All your energy is gone out of your body and just thriving, pounding headaches and you have to sleep. So I don't think um, I had a seizure. I think they put me to sleep. And then after they put me to sleep, I ended up waking up in a darker room. Um, I woke up with between three to five people in like a um uh what do you call that um space suits like you're going up in space the all gray and stuff coming up and everything and then for a ha hat that they were wearing was something really big and round it was very big and round and their face like only took maybe just a little piece of the center of this thing and the eyes were oval like this and they were on both sides of the face. So oval eyes, very big, and they were screens so that they could see out because I could see the screens and I couldn't see them inside though. And so when I woke up, I said, where am I? Am I in heaven? And they're like, yeah, you are. And I said, well, where's God? I wanna be judged, I wanna be judged. And they said, God's not coming today. They said, you're not going to be judged, you're going back. And I said, I don't want to go back. I don't want to go back. And they said, you have to. They said, Tate, just remember this. You are not real and you are a cologne. And I said, well, then where's the real me? What do you mean I'm a cologne? And they said, just remember that. And they said, when you get older, you will start to understand what your purpose is and why you were here. I said, well, what is my purpose? What am I, where am I, who am I going to work for? What am I going to do? And they said, you're going to be working for the government. And I said, yeah, right, me working for government? I, I'm not even getting educated in school. I'm living in hospitals and I'm really, really sick. And they said, yes, Tate. They said, um... They told me a few things and they even said something about that I'm gonna smoke when I'm older. And I said, no, I'm not gonna smoke. They said, yes, you will. And and I do, and now I do smoke, but I don't know how or why that came up. But the number one thing I can remember most of all was that they said that I was cloned. I am not real and I am a cologne. So this has been in my head ever since that day. And I've always wondered like, am I real? Or trying to figure out like what they meant by that. So as I get older and I tell you more stories, I'll eventually explain to you how I believe now that we are in a game and we're all cloned and we're cloned to come into a game and play and be tested. And then we live our real life. 
So, but anyways, um, so yeah, that was, uh, that happened. Another thing that happened was I went sailing that year with the cop and my two foster parents. Um, the cop had a sailboat at Outer Harbor and I would have never known that if I didn't buy a boat when I got older and end up at Outer Harbor. I started recognizing and remembering where they weren't allowed to be in the marina and they had to come outside of the marina to park along the road. So that's how I figured out what marina he came from. And I can remember too coming in through that part to get to Outer Harbor on the boat when we went out and then we came back. So basically we went out sailing and when we got out so far they stopped and they started drinking and beer or liquor or whatever it was they were drinking. And one time I asked if I could use the bathroom and they told me, uh, my foster parents looked at him and says, is that okay? And then he's like, yeah, let him go. So I went inside, I used the bathroom and went back out then cops came over, the marine cops, and they came over towards his boat. So he says, give me the drinks, pour it down the sink. And he poured down all the drinks and handed back orange juice or whatever on glass to them. And uh, then the marine cops came and they were asking questions and then said, who's this little guy? And my foster parent says, oh, we're his guardian. And uh, so then after the cop, marine cops left, then the wind started coming in so then they started to pull the sails up and I started getting scared and freaking out the boat's gonna sink the boat's gonna tip and a whole bunch of stuff so I ended up uh, I ended up after they said it's not gonna tip just hold on so I'm just sitting there little boy on a sailboat holding on like ah it's gonna fall and yeah i remember it i was probably one of my scariest childhood things that even scared me more than waking up with uh, people in alien or some weird costumes inside of that uh, house in that island and uh so yeah they took me to so many places i would go to king kitchener london um kingston and constantly go on long trips um, I remember too my brother got kicked out of school and he had to start going to a private school in Guelph and he had to get driven um, by a special driver out there every day and drive back and I had to see therapists all the time and talk with therapists and the first time I ever saw one I just played dead and then after that it was more or less like playing card games or stuff like that and uh so yeah and the driver i had that drove me to see the therapist he always bought me a nice treat um i can remember many times being sent back into temp eight like temp homes for a weekend or something so my foster parents would get breaks from me or they just sent me off the people without children's aid knowing i'm not sure but uh, I'd end up spending weekend with somebody else and another. I ended up going back with uh, the ones that abused me as a kid, the two brothers. Um, and I, he abused me again. And then I can remember uh, another one that I had to go see, they had a farm and they made me get up in the morning to go out and feed the animals and everything and do stuff and do the chores before we began our day every day. And his daughters, he had two daughters. One was closer to my age, the other one was older. And they were both beautiful girls. And the older one played lacrosse on the ice. And it was the first time I went and watched a game like that where, you know, I never seen that before, it was so cool. But uh, yeah, and they had no TVs in the house, wasn't allowed TVs, you could only listen to a radio. And so, yeah, and that place. So it happened a lot. I'd go to different temp homes just temporarily and then go back over with the foster parents that I was supposed to be with. And uh, my foster sisters used to go out shooting BB guns at each other or their friends. They always fought with BB guns and played rough, whatever. 
Um, they were all in air cadets except for me. And so guns were like their toys. And uh, yeah, I wasn't allowed because I was under 12 or also because I was epileptic with seizures and things like that, so I couldn't join. Um, I can remember a Halloween party through Children's Aid where we went into the Children's Aid place with all the foster kids. And then I won first place on uh, costume and uh, I ended up with some, whatever I won, I had to trade with my brother because I was too y young for that. And it was more suitable for my brother. So we had to switch our gifts. And I remember too that cop that we went sailing with, the one that I went to his house for the pig roast, the one that also had a little thing where a bunch of kids went to his house for some kind of party thing and then he had a German Shepherd and he put the glove on and everything and showed the German Shepherd attacking and everything. And you know, that he's, you know, training his um, dog for work and everything. And he was at this um, place too that day when we were at the Halloween party and Children's Aid, I can remember seeing him there. So like for some reason, this guy's been involved in my life for longer than you can imagine, more years than my foster parents. You know, I think the last time I seen him was six years ago, maybe not even. So, but um, yeah, so that's pretty much age 10. A uh, few, I played baseball, softball, um, more actually the first time I played was t-ball or whatever where it sits on the thing and you just hit it. And then I got into uh, softball and I played soccer, outdoor soccer, and like they just had to keep me busy. I was so hyper, so much energy and I always had to do something. Um, you know, video games was not my way. I remember I asked for a Nintendo for Christmas. They bought a Nintendo for the family and bought us the little Game Boys. I didn't want a Game Boy, I just wanted my own Nintendo and I got upset and said, this isn't what I asked for, I wanted a Nintendo. And I could remember that too, I wasn't satisfied. And so, but uh, yeah, so that's age 10. So come back tomorrow, I'll tell you about age 11. Um, Sorry I'm a day late on this video. I had no space left on my phone and I was having trouble erasing things and making space so I could continue this. So uh, I might even put another one on a little later today, but once it gets dark, it's kind of hard for me to do a video on here. Um, it's a little too dark out here for you to see and I don't have nothing to hide. I'd like my face to show as I'm speaking and be kind of hidden in the dark. And uh, so anyways, guys, you have a great evening and uh, see talk to you tomorrow. Thanks again for watching. Please share this as many people as you can. Probably best wait until you finish watching the whole story, then share it on with people. Or when you start hearing these um, unbelievable, amazing ways that I'm still alive. And you just want to show other people that. Um, so God bless you all. Thanks again. Bye.